Hello, hello guys, this is TuckM and I'm playing on the Mind Crack server and I was just picking up my gear here <laughs> I dropped it off when we had the arena fight yeah that was fun guys I hope you enjoyed that um, we did it was cool you know for us it's also amazing to do these group events and things and yeah when we find time to do it um, we really do enjoy and yeah we always having a good time before and after the events joking a lot yeah and it's really cool that the arena actually finally yeah came to a good use you know it actually really came alive and that is pretty awesome so I think down there this is the way to the portal somehow if I remember correctly yes I think it is should be able to find my way back <laughs> to the base where I believe I had a visitor you guys commented about it and I think generic B struck again at our place I'm not quite sure if it's a prank yet or what but something with chickens <laughs> definitely have to check that out and see what's going on there I really like the combination of of sandstone and leaves by the way gives this place a good feel so yeah <laughs> I'd say I travel home guys and yeah let's check out what what awaits us at the home base. Alright, we made it home. So far. Looks quiet. Peaceful and quiet. Up there somewhere? I wonder what he did here. Let's go check. Oh, I hear chicken. And it's not my chicken tower. Something's going on. No. Oh, yeah, okay. Why is there a baby chicken? What did he do? can see something up there. There is something up there in the sky. Right there. What is that? What did you do? Oh. <laughs> okay, we need to check that out. Wait a minute. get something to get up there oh man I don't even have a real dirt chest yet <laughs> after all these months we could also use this this is good and some dirt maybe somewhere a little bit okay it looked really really high up let's see hmm somebody on no, I can sleep. I have to sleep anyways. My spawn is still set to the arena. If I die, we're screwed. Let's quickly hop into the bed and then we check out what's up there. Come on. <laughs> All right. Make it day. Sweet. There it is. Yeah, you can definitely see it. There's something. What the heck? Kind of a chicken dispenser or whatever it is. Okay, let's see. It's up there. I wonder where did he go up? Nah. 
chicken. The only place chicken are allowed in my jungle is in my death machine over there. Oh, that looks... It must have been here. Work from up here somehow. Let's see. Let's get up there. All right, I see, I see. <laughs> Chicken dispenser. Uh -huh. This is how we roll. It didn't really kick in, you can see that. Nobody was around, so the he threw chicken in there, but it didn't grow up. So the whole machine couldn't really work. <laughs> Whew. Let's see. Okay, he just... There's a dispenser there with eggs. I see. Basically the same principle I use over at the um, infinite chicken farm. <laughs> uh -huh. There's a sign on the side. Let's read it. Enough robo-packers. These are organic. <laughs> oh boy. <coughs> Hopefully he didn't put down any more of the robo-packers. That would be uh, horrible, actually. All right. Well, there was a quick cleanup. Hope there are not more, but I don't think so. Get rid of that. Wait. Back down. It's actually a pretty cool view from up here. You can see almost all the area we've been working in. The only thing that's cut out a bit is over there, the ice tray. But yeah, really cool. All the walkways. Came quite some ways with the treehouse here. I think today I want to um, finish the beacon there, so we got all buffs all around. It would be a nice project. I think I should have enough iron blocks. And yeah, then we don't need to eat around the base. That would be really nice. I probably want to put region on and speed. Okay, let's clear out the space here a little bit few iron blocks on me and guys yeah quickly want to talk about something um, at the moment all over the news the Austra Australian sprint star Petrus you know the guy the Blade Runner um, who had um, yeah, has no legs basically <laughs> I was just uh, grin um, yeah, giggling a little bit inside because of the constant beef has no legs joke so you know not making fun about uh, handicapped people here but <laughs> whenever you say that now it's tainted you know it's been a joke that's been around so long and yeah beef is not really happy about it by the way because yeah it could you know for people who are not insiders they really could uh, see that as something offensive and we definitely don't want to do that yeah but what happened there seems to be like total tragedy guys looks like the dude actually shot his model girlfriend for some reason nobody knows at the moment the story is that he kind of thought she was a like intruder or something burglar and well they found like a blood smeared cricket badge or so like you know club or what however you call it and it seems like they got in a horrible fight and then she retreated to the bathroom and uh, he kind of shot her through the bathroom door multiple times. And maybe then he came back to terms or he wanted to disguise the deed because then he actually tried to save her somehow, carried her down and tragedy. And you always wonder how the heck, you know, 
Um, you could think he got it all. I mean, you know, he he was a role model for many people, and also, yeah, you know, making a lot of money from advertisement. I think he was a big star, dating the models, obviously, you know. And whenever that happens, you know, dude got money, <laughs> and well, you really do wonder why do things like that happen. I mean really strange and I was really surprised and uh, of course you know that he's not proven beyond any reasonable doubt uh, so until you know um, the verdict is spoken and more proof is there he is you should assume he is not guilty that is how law work oops, works in our societies so don't want to you know judge this guy but yeah at the moment really looks like he really freaked out and did something crazy there and yeah that is insane I always wondered because you know I think these people have dreams and well one of my dreams was as soon as I realized it was not a lifelong dream of course but as soon as I realized hey there's some people out on the YouTubes that like my stuff um, that that became a dream, you know, I chased this dream, I wanted to be able to one day do what I do now, you know, just be able to do the YouTube. Doesn't have to be rich or whatever, but, you know, live the dream, and it seems like this this guy also was living his dream, and I couldn't be the ha more happy, you know, because I'm in a spot where I wanted to be, and I kind of achieved that, and then you go crazy like that, throw it all away, Mm, I can only assume maybe alcohol was involved. There was also some reports in the press um, that he had some yeah, minor, minor stuff going on, but often related with DUIs. You know, he was, I think, with a car and with a boat and, and some minor, if you can call these things minor, um, cases of domestic violence whatever that was, fights and stuff, so there is supposedly a history to that. And maybe the guy was pretty ragey or something. I mean, you got to be tough if you want to make it to the top in the, as a pro athlete, but yeah, that's, things like that always hit you by surprise, you know. You really think, why the heck? And it's probably, you know, in Australia and also around the world, um, people will watch this court case or this yeah the situation and it's gonna be like an OJ Simpson thing I, I think you know he's gonna bring in good lawyers and it's gonna be a long long running thing in the meantime the girl is buried and dead um, it's often forgotten people discuss how yeah why and poor poor pictures and yeah whatever but same time you have to see uh, there was the father crying and yeah it's really confusing what do you think guys what what made the dude go go crazy like that I mean what could be the reason of course like a fight with the girlfriend but you know you really got it in you to freak out like that and start shooting at somebody um, yeah I definitely think there must have be, uh, been alcohol involved or something. Cannot explain it otherwise to myself. Um, it's often the case, you know. It's not like a given that. Oh man, I should have brought another two ingots. It's not like a given that um, everybody gets aggressive on alcohol or while being drunk or being really drunk. But it's a proven fact um, that many, many violent crimes are committed under the influence. <laughs> you guys for sure remember the story um, when we were, were at Minecon and you know we were hanging out with these guys from, from the Netherlands and everything was fine and dandy and the more drunk they got um, you could definitely see the more aggressive they were and until in the end when then B-dubs came they started to harass him and I had to step in. Um, before we were really you know everything was was fun we were we were hanging out and suddenly you know the the alcohol created this what is going on why can't we pick a secondary power
is it not completed? Wait a minute. Is there something missing? What are we missing here? Are we missing some blocks? Should be the right size now. Let's have a look. Oh, I think we had a, a gap here. I think we had a gap here. So yeah. Oh. Hey. What is going on? Where are my iron blocks disappearing to? What? <laughs> now it's it's getting strange. Okay, let's see. So yeah, I'm not the biggest fan of alcohol in general. I mean, you know, partying out is is fine and 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 good. Oh yeah. So, yep, yeah, we were missing one. But yeah, sometimes people get aggressive. In my case, um, when I, I was drunk in my life, of course, you know, and I'm 35 years old and it might eventually happen along the, the years. But I have to say I never um, was like ag getting aggressive or so from alcohol, not more or less aggressive than I was, maybe more cheerful and more funny. But um, I never was able to really, you know, go go super crazy I always had this little bit of reason or yeah being normal inside me and yeah that okay let's see yeah we should have both buffs now yes and that uh, kept me out of a lot of trouble typically you know when you're young you get into these situations younger let's say but as I was doing a lot of sports also at this time I was kind of in a in a safe spot, you know, was not get, getting too drunk and okay, when I was out with my buddies there were some small incidents, but other than that, all cool. Another thing that once happened, you know, I never really told this story, but um, at Halloween this year, when I was still living in my old apartment, there were some um, super drunk teenagers out of there and uh, out there and they really went went nuts, man. They were going through the town, throwing eggs at houses and cars and whatnot. <laughs> and actually, I had the window like a little bit open, and they tossed an egg at my let's keep that at my window, and actually hit my computer a bit with eggs and whatnot. And I kind of was chasing them down through half of the village. And while I was chasing them, eventually I caught him, by the way. Um, but that's another story. <laughs> Um, they, yeah, I came across like a bunch of people and they went berserk in the city, later on the police um, took care of them um, yeah, and they had um, caused damage of over 10,000 euros, demolishing cars and whatnot and yeah, all in a drunken night and yeah, f they were just normal dudes but they went overboard, lost control because of the alcohol and now they're they're doomed. I mean, they're still young. The parents said, well, <laughs> good, good for you. We're going to, the insurance paid for it, but they have to pay back. Or the parents paid for it, but they have to pay it back. And uh, now they're in trouble. So next two, two, three summers ain't going to be fun for them. They are going to be working their butts off and trying to make, pay the money back. I mean, well deserved. I mean, I would freak out if somebody would demolish my car in a, never happened to me but I would yep I would definitely get mad I was already getting mad for them tossing stuff at my computer because you know I work I work with it I can't deal with um, with, uh, with something like that if, if that gets damaged <laughs> and yeah I was really I was chasing them basically what they did was they never thought somebody would really take the effort and really come after them well, I was like reacting immediately. I had my sports pants on and I didn't want to run out um, like with the sports pants. So I put on my blue jeans and some, some sneakers so I could sprint. I knew they were going to try to uh, try to run away. So I heard, heard them giggling and, and running maybe 200 meters away from me. 
And then I started to chase them. They saw they saw me qu quite fast. That was the problem. I couldn't really catch up to him. And then I had to chase him for at least half an hour through the whole city. And they were taking shortcuts and whatnot. But eventually I caught two of them. They were teenagers, 16. I, I just, you know, I scared them a bit, was shouting at them and acting as if I was a super uh, gangster because you never know, you know, you, I was alone with them. And then <coughs> and I was intimidating <coughs> excuse me, is intimidating them a bit. <laughs> and um, then it was like, sorry, sorry, sorry. And then I immediately knew, okay, th those are just some stupid fools, not really bad guys. And yeah, then I helped them and there were some other people coming and the police was already notified and maybe two minutes after it, I had caught up to them, the police was already there. So, and was, you know, they were scared because I was, I was acting so big. But yeah, I would not beat like a beat up a teenager or something. That would be a bit um, over dramatic for tossing some eggs. But they had to learn their lessons. <laughs> and yeah, the biggest trouble for them though was um, when the police then caught up to them. They found they were all 16 and some of them even younger. They found beer, which would be halfway okay in Germany. You could buy beer when you are 16. Um, but they also found some hard liquor vodka and stuff like that and that is uh, only allowed if you're an adult and if you're caught with it it's not it's not good you, you can get some trouble and for that they actually really got in trouble because it was not the first time and they had to do a lot of community work for that as well later on you know cleaning up streets stuff like that work in um, the retirement home and yeah <laughs> um, funny thing then was um, back in the days, I was still, you know, part, partially working at the retirement home, you know, where I, my former job. And yeah, a few days before I actually left, the, the dude showed up to do his uh, yeah, social work there immediately. I think 30 hours he got for the alcohol um, thing and causing, <laughs> causing trouble. So yeah, guys, if you <coughs> want to learn a lesson, if you are younger with the alcohol, stay cool you know it's not really worth it <laughs> if you mess up your half of your teenager years you know because ten thousand bucks they had to pay that's not not yeah not nothing and two of them really got caught and the rest i don't know how they're gonna handle it hopefully they are buddies and say okay we're gonna carry a bit of the load but you know how it goes in situations like that first everybody is best buddies and yeah party and cool and then when when something stupid happens Nobody wants to be involved and everybody backs out and acts as if, you know, I'm, I wasn't there. No, no, I don't know nothing. I've, I've seen that happen many times. <laughs> so, yeah, that was another, you know, we started with Petrus. Yeah, but it was the alcohol. I still think it, is, it was the, the alcohol problems he had there. Hmm. Really strange. And also something that also was strange is, like, normally doesn't happen, but actually the Pope, it was a German at the moment, um, he actually resigned because he was feeling too old. I quickly talked about that with B00. Um, yeah, you, you rarely see, see stuff like that happening as well. Normally, if people are, like, in such a, in such a job, in such a powerful position, tend to clinch onto that as long to yeah you know sometimes even too long he was able to let go and said yeah okay i wanna i'm done that was too exhausting i'm getting old i kind of want to enjoy my last few years i don't feel the power in me anymore it takes some courage actually to do that you know it's about the same thing when elderly people decide hey I think I'm gonna give away my driver's license. <coughs> Excuse me, my driver's license. Just can't handle it anymore. There's, there's also a little thing. Lately, again, was reading in the newspaper, um, and it seems to happen quite often. Um, an elderly woman just was riding with her car. Was a bit traffic was too much for her, and it just oh, dang. she just didn't watch and drove over a 16-year-old. Um, teenage girl coming by with her scooter dead just recently close to my area here <sighs> when things like that happen that's always shakes you to the core 
And yeah, you sometimes wish, then you always hear these voices, why are these old people driving with their cars? Well, just put yourself in that position. If you're older, your mobility gets lower. <coughs> it's hard for you to get around. And then people always say, well, then use a bus. Well, you might have bad knees, bad legs, and sometimes it's really hard to get into a bus. And you cannot, and the car is the only way that keeps your social life somehow intact, you know, maybe you'll be able to visit your old friends with your car and even, you know, maybe stand out a little bit because yeah, not everybody has a car in this age and yeah, you want to hold on to it, don't want to give it up from a human perspective, this is totally understandable um, if you put yourself in that spot, you know, and yeah, I don't know how I, w I would do it. The moment I'm really eager on having a driver's license because finally, yeah, today's the day where we're going to pick up um, a car, um, our new car. Finally, for the first time, me and my girlfriend actually bought a car, like a new car. Um, yeah, thanks to my girlfriend now also being um, yeah, working or working as a journalist for a few months now and over a year now and she got a little raise and now we could afford it and take this step um, it's still not in case if you wonder with the whole YouTube money and stuff um, I made it so far now that I can actually you know live with it and don't have to worry all day long that's how far I made it but it's not like uh, for example I could not go there and um, just uh, buy a car you know cash that would not be possible we just leased it normal you know nothing nothing special now we are in heavy debt and have to pay it off for the next few years um, but yeah leasing a car seems to be a reasonable deal if you look into buying a new car and the idea was because both of us uh, don't have much time and we want to have a reliable car our last car was a used car and we always had trouble with the with that car often had to yeah had it fixed and whatnot and we didn't want that and but if you're buying a new car you will lose a lot of money because it just yeah the value of the car just drops um, when it's no longer brand new so yeah leasing seems to be um, a reasonable way to do it it's basically you rent the car from them for three years and um, after three years you can decide if you want to really get the car or um, yeah, if you want to maybe get an, another one or um, yeah just say okay it's good I had the car for a while now I'm gone and yeah it was a pretty fair deal we negotiated nicely we also got a little bit of a discount of four percent because the girlfriend works as a journalist we didn't know that and yeah, the salesman actually was so so nice to mention it, saying, "Hey, oh, you work for the press? That's good. We have a discount for you." I assume they want. There is. It is there that it, every car dealer gives it. By the way, it's not only um, certain ones. I think it's maybe f that the car dealers have a good standing with the press or something. Was a bit surprised about that. And yeah, it's also my girlfriend mentioned it is um, discussed. You know, in the like amongst journalists that you actually should not accept stuff like that and yeah okay my girlfriend really doesn't work for a car um, like car newspaper or anything and yeah um, so we 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 did it and now we don't feel obliged to report very positively about that or something uh, it was just a deal negotiating and basically paid for the winter tires we needed for the car or something not not really but um, uh, it was a nice contribution also uh, our old car was so jacked up by now um, we tried to sell it and they said well we can only send it to Africa people over there might have a use for it but um, 500 bucks tops and that was pretty disappointing after we just spent I don't know around 600 bucks for the winter tires we just bought for the thing before the winter <laughs> so yeah and then we thought okay not good. And another positive thing about the brand new car is now we have a four-year 
full service coverage. That means every service you have to do within the four years is covered and also prolonged guarantee, not only two year guarantee, but um, extended guarantee for four years. If anything breaks or something, they will take care of it. And that is actually really cool. So that's what I needed. You know, there's always this discussions, new car versus used car. Does it make sense? Did you lose money? And yeah, I would say it depends a bit on your situation. I just want to have a reliable car where I don't have to worry about, um, you know, service or anything else. I just want it to work and that's it. And I think with the decision we made now, buying this car, it's a Renault uh, Citroën DS3. Oh, that looks mighty strange. <laughs> I think it was a, a good decision. Um, I saw... Oh, we blocked. That was a bad decision. We lost some iron ingots there. Well, I saw some comments when I talked about the car before. No, it's still there, right? You said, oh, dude, as a German guy, how could you buy a French car? <laughs> First of all, uh, we live in Europe now, so yeah. But I also know, of course, the German cars are very, very good, but so are the French cars. And the main point is, um, I hopefully can do a little bit of a vlog about the car, and you will see it is a very, very nice car. It has like complete leather and everything for a really mod uh, reasonable price compared to what a German car would cost. And that was basically the point. Quality is still go very good and I was reading some tests about it and reviews and it was always good. But it costs 30% <laughs> or more le less to a comparable German car. And yeah, when you have to think about money and I'd say most people actually have to do that. They cannot just, you know, throw money out of the window. Um, it totally made sense for us here, and yeah, that's why we, that's why we um, went for the French car. And I think, um, yeah, I hope, as I said, I can do a little vlog about it so you guys can can see it. And I'm really happy about it that we could we could do that now means a lot um, to me. There's some personal history involved, but that is would lead to long, but it was a really good and happy day. Especially felt happy about that, yeah, because it's mainly for my girlfriend, you know, and I especially felt happy about that, you know, I could say, hey, don't worry, we can, we can handle that. Um, let's go and get that car, because she also liked it a lot. Um, yeah, I didn't, you know, try to make an, a fair compromise as you know, not just go for super manly man car, um, something in the middle, and I think it suits both of us. And yeah, that's the story of the car. Gonna pick it up in a few hours, and yeah, as I said, hopefully I can use the video camera a bit and show you how it looks. Of course, yeah, part of the car is owed to you, of course, and. Yeah, so if I get one, should be able to participate maybe. If I, I'll try. Okay, let's have a look at the beacon here. Yep. While we were talking, I think we, we caught on to something. I think we're going a good way here. Let's maybe stand up here to have a good look on it. Yeah. Why not, guys? Might introduce some leaves there as well. And maybe we can put a snow cover on top of the pumpkins. That should work out. That is also possible now. I don't know if it already works in this snapshot. It's always confusing. We're still running on 13W04B. But yeah, I think that it takes us somewhere. Leaves need to be involved. And then we probably see something nice here out of that beacon soon. Finally, I got the buffs around. I have it in the loop for a long time. Let's just throw some some leaves like that in here just to check out how it would turn out. You might want to see it still, you know, we don't want to completely hide it. Oh! 
Yeah, that already already feels nice. I just feel I have to give it some more structure on the lower part, so it kind of you know stands off from the normal tree crown there, and then make this tree crown merge around it a little bit, and that we should be onto something. Yeah, the redstone blocks would look cool as well. Or diamond there. <laughs> That would be nice. Well, in any case, guys, I got to get ready. Need to do some paperwork for the car trade still, but yeah, most of it is done. It's insurance stuff. And that's it for today here from the Mindcrack server. And yeah, make sure to check out the new series, um, Rome Total War. Uh, first few episodes were heavily supported. Much appreciated, guys. Much appreciated. It keeps me going. I'm out. Bye-bye.